So what I want to show you here today is more about the advanced threat protection from Microsoft that is now included in Microsoft 365 Business. So in essence, advanced threat protection, or ATP, is an advanced security option that provides protection over links, over anti-phishing, and also um, over attachment. So the way, where we find that is we look in the security and compliance area. So you'll need to log in as a global admin to do that. And once you select the security and compliance area, you'll be taken to the uh, screen that looks like this. We need to expand threat management and then go down to the policy option. Now inside the policy option, you'll see that we have now three additional uh, options here above and beyond our usual anti-spam, DKIM and anti-malware. So this is an indication that we have ATP uh, inside this tenant. Now again if we go into the ATP anti-phishing you'll see that again this is all about policies so we need to go in and create a policy but I've already created one so let me just go in here and show you what it's about. So the idea here is it's designed to uh, combat impersonation spoofing uh, as well as a number of additional options. We basically uh, target the domains that we want to go to. So if we go in and edit this, you'll see that we can control uh, who it is um, aimed at. And again, we can add additional conditions here based on a recipient uh, if we want. Then we can go into the impersonation options here in the policy, and you'll see that we can add uh, users. So again, the idea here is the recommendation is to add up to 20 internal users uh, you want to protect from impersonation, the people that you'd be doing that for are typically the CEO, the CFO, senior leaders, and I would suggest also those who write the checks or handles payments. Now we can turn on uh, protection for the domains I own as well as any custom domains you may have as well. Then we look at the action, so we're typically going to quarantine when we detect uh, impersonation. We've also turned on the uh, mailbox intelligence, and what this does, it basically looks at the pattern of communication between uh, users who they talk to most often. And again, uh, the idea here is to trigger an alert or an action uh, when an attacker is impersonating one of these contacts. Again, we can put in uh, trusted locations, and then finally, we can review our settings and turn those uh, on and off for all the options. Now, apart from impersonation, we've also got the option here to go in and uh, look at spoofing. So again, this is enabled. Uh, what actions are we going to take here? Again, we're going to move a spoofed email to the uh, recipient's junk mail. And again, I can review my settings and make any changes. And the final option here is uh, the ability to control the level of our anti-phishing, uh, how we want to deal with this. So we can move this from standard to aggressive uh, as we want. And again, then when we've done that, we can then uh, save that. And remember, that's going to have uh, an impact on how it deals with emails. We can create multiple policies here. So we can go in and create uh, different policies and have a different priority for each. We can also target that at different users. Now that's the anti-phishing. So let's have a look at safe attachments. So safe attachments will basically uh, sandbox the attachments that are inbound from our email for users and then verify that they aren't malicious and then take action. Now we can not only sandbox the emails, but we can also basically turn on ATP for SharePoint, OneDrive and Microsoft Teams, right? And when we do, it basically means that any file from uh, SharePoint, OneDrive or Microsoft Teams that's identified as malicious, uh, ATP is going to prevent users from opening and downloading that file. And we want to make sure that we've also got the protection for emails. And the way we do emails is, is we go in and we create a policy. In this case, I've created a policy. So let me just go in and edit that and show you what settings have been made. So if I go down to settings here, you'll see that I've got a option here to monitor, replace, block uh, items that are um, malicious and the option that I would recommend you consider is uh, dynamic delivery. So that's going to deliver the email body. So what's actually written in the email but not the attachment will use a placeholder while it goes out and scans that email. And again uh, we can also redirect the emails and if there is a timeout or if it's taking too long to scan we can also block that. So once we've got that we save that. We'll get our warning. We'll update that, make sure that you do save your policies once you check these options for safe attachments. All right, and the last one here is safe links. So basically safe links is going to uh, require that we create a policy. So let's go in and have a look at the policy that applies across the organization. 
you'll see that there's not a lot to set here. We just block the following URL. So we can specifically block URLs that we mentioned. And we're also ability to apply this to our Pro Plus and turn off whether it is also tracking um, email addresses for our users. Now, a bit further down, you'll see that we can apply policies to specific recipients. And I've already got a policy there. So let me go in and edit that. Now in here, you'll see that I have the options that automatically apply across the organization that I can't make any changes to. So this gives you an indication that the global policy basically is turned on and it is using safe attachments to scan the download content and apply safe links to messages automatically. So basically these options are turned on uh, once you create a policy across the organization, you can alter these uh, for individual users uh, if you want by policy. Again, we've got the tracking and we've got the ability uh, to not rewrite or whitelist certain URLs. So again, once you make those changes, these will apply to the users that we've targeted. So remember for safe links, you set up a policy for the whole organization and that is going to enact uh, global protection for the links uh, that are suspect. And then if you want, you can also have policies for individuals and you can mix and match those uh, basically as required. So we've gone in, we've done an ATP anti-phishing, ATP safe attachments and an ATP safe links. Now, to show you some of this in action, let's go to the mailbox. You'll see that I've received a, a phishing email here uh, that is aimed at capturing my credentials or potentially allowing making me download a malicious file. All right, so again, it's prompting me to renew my uh, Netflix membership. You'll see that it includes a link. Now, if I hover over that link, you'll see that the link is basically actually been rewritten with a protection.outlook.com. So if I copy this link and let's just open this link in Notepad so that we can uh, basically see what's going on here. All right, so if I go back to the beginning of the email, you'll notice that uh, it has been overwritten or prefaced with this proxy address. So it's going to basically run that uh, through a proxy and warn our users. So the idea here is, is that if a user does click on a malicious link, it will open it in a new page. As you've got here, you'll see that you've got the safe links in there and it's going to bring up a warning for that user to let them know that this website is malicious and they shouldn't continue any further. So again, this is how safe links works. It basically is a proxy to no malicious sites and it's going to jump in there and prevent users uh, from clicking on them, or at least warn them before they go out and do that. Now, what I'm going to do here to show you the safe attachments is I'll just pop out to a consumer email. What I've done is I've sent an attachment here that actually has a crypto locker inside of it. You'll notice it is a zip file that actually has a password on it as well. I'm going to send it to my administrative users. I'm going to send here. You'll see that uh, it will send that. Let me go into sent and just verify that it has indeed sent that. And let me go back to the uh, to that oops to that users uh, mailbox. All right, and what we need to do is just wait for that uh, email to arrive and then we'll see how ATP has uh, dealt with it. So we can see that the uh, file has been received in the inbox. You'll see here that I get the message uh, in the email body, but you'll notice that uh, unsafe attachments have been blocked. So again, you'll see that I can uh, look at this. Now the way to see what's actually in this message here that has been replaced is uh, basically to click on it. So here you'll see that I get a notice that the attachment was found to be unsafe. It has a CryptoLocker uh, virus inside it. And again, what it has done is it has replaced uh, the attachment, the actual attachment, the infected attachment with a notification here so the user knows exactly what's happened. And that has happened based on our policy. So what will happen obviously when an email is delivered to uh, this inbox, it will be sandboxed, it will be then checked if it's good, thanks to the dynamic delivery option, it will then uh, be replaced in the header uh, so the user can get to it. If it is malicious uh, or unsafe, it will be replaced with the notification that you see here. So basically what we've done, we've gone into the Microsoft 365 Security and Compliance, we've gone into Threat Management, we've gone into Policy, and we've gone in and configured our ATP anti-phishing, our ATP safe attachments, and our ATP safe links. So these are all designed to improve the security, uh, especially of email, for the users across the organization. Now, again, ATP is available as a standard 
uh, standalone SKU for about uh, $2 Australian, $2.50 Australian uh, per user. Uh, but remember that it also is now included in Microsoft 365 Business. So if you do go Microsoft 365 Business, you will get an ATP advanced threat protection across every user that you license for Microsoft 365. So thank you very much for watching this video.